G'day, Hugh here from videsign.com.au, a design company based on the Gold Coast in Australia. Thank you for joining me. Now, I often provide tutorials on Photoshop and how you can use Photoshop to enhance your photography. Uh, what Adobe have done, and it's not really good and it's angered a lot of people, is been forcing uh, users onto a subscription model. And this has the potential of driving prices up and meaning the Adobe products become unaffordable for general people. If you have the standalone product, it's no longer going to be supported and, and updated. So you're sort of caught in a hard place there. If you still want to use Photoshop and, and Lightroom, uh, you have to really subscribe to Adobe. Now we've had a look at Luminar, which is a great standalone product. It uh, doesn't require any subscription once you buy it. It's yours and uh, the updates come along with it. And it does a great job. Today though, I thought we'd have a look at another alternative and that's On One's RAW, Photo RAW. Now it also has a subscription offer, but you can buy it standalone. Now I'm not sure whether that means it's going to go down the Adobe mode and, and require you to eventually get onto the subscription model. But at this stage, it provides you with a pretty good alternative, uh, which looks like will be updated and supported throughout. So let's have a look at how On One presents and what it can do, just with the basics, and maybe down the track we'll have a look at a few more advanced features. Okay, so this is the uh, On One website, www.onone.com. Gives you the option of trying the software for free or buying it, and it's available for Mac and for Windows. Check out the website, it's pretty good. It has a lot of detail on the software, and uh, you can read up and see the different features that you can utilize when using the software. And if after that you decide, well, I'd like to try this, or even I might like to buy it and move away from Lightroom and Photoshop. You have the option of buying it as a standalone piece of software and it's currently on sale or you can subscribe so currently for $130 for the year. So let's load it up and see how it works. We'll come into the browse feature to begin with. It's so basically it's like Lightroom. You choose your media location and it will bring it up in a browser for you and then you can choose what you'd like to edit and uh, by, by selecting so you can have more than one item selected you could have edit much like Lightroom multiple images and you can sync them up as well but we're just going to concentrate on one image for today I'm going to select this one here and choose the develop option and then it gets loaded up in the software. Now I'm just going to collapse these to begin with and just quickly run through the features at your disposal. So we have a crop tool, adjustment brush, gradient, an eraser, a retouch, clone and a zoom tool. We have presets, so if you have a look at the preset here uh, it gives you the option just to apply a preset to your photo if you don't want to do anything more than that and then you can just leave it as that and uh, but uh, yeah I think you, you don't really want to be doing the presets to begin with you want to learn how to use the software and the options that it can provide to you so we will just reset that and close that on the right here we have our editing options so tone and color details and lens correction and we'll start with tone and color and like you'd expect to find in Camera Raw or in Lightroom, you have your different uh, slider options. You've got your exposure, and your contrast, and your highlights, and your shadows. But also you have this mid-tone slider, which gives you just that little bit more control. Then you've got your blacks and whites, which you can see for clipping by holding down the J key like so, J key off, holding down the J key. And it's the same with blacks, holding down the J key, releasing the J key. So there's not a lot of uh, work to be done on the blacks and whites in this particular photo. Uh, then you've got a really cool 
well, you've got your structure, which gives you a bit more detail. You can really pump that up, which is nice. And then you've got this really cool haze option, which um, adds in or takes away haze, and um, it really can affect the look of your your photo. And so that's not too bad. And then we have got uh, your color temperature. You've got your options, or you can manually change them yourselves. So if you went with something like cloudy or daylight, maybe daylight, but say, okay, well, that's a bit too blue, so we'd bring back the, the blue a little and uh, increase the vibrance. So that's tone and color. We also have details, which is your normal sharpening, and uh, if you hold the Alt key down, You can see there's the edges that are being sharpened. So if you really have it all the way there, and uh, yeah, you can sharpen things, sharpen your edges and uh, reduce your noise as well. Not a lot to worry about in this photo. You've also got your lens correction. If you have uh, edges that are green or purple, you can uh, affect them there. And you also choose a lens profile. And you have more options in here. So color adjustments, curves, which is uh, your normal curves, options, uh, you can split tone if you want, and uh, you can also put a vignette on, which we might do later on. Now one thing I probably should have done at the very start was come up to crop and make sure this is level. So you've got a level up here, choose the horizon since we have got a horizon photo, and draw a straight line across the horizon and just straighten that up a tad. Now we can do some work on local adjustments, which is this here. Now each one uh, has a new layer, or it's done by layers. So to begin with, it's defaulted to the uh, darkened one, but you can also have lighten or vibrance, which um, bump, bumps up the vibrance by default amount, but you can make, make any of these change to point, depending on what effect you're after, and there's also more options available as well. But what I'm going to go with first of all is darken. And I'm going to choose a graduated filter. And you just drop it onto the photo by clicking and then you can move it to wherever you would like to make a gradient. Now I don't want to go too far into the water. So we want that to be about there. And uh, so that's darken the sky up a bit, uh, add a bit of contrast in, and uh, open up the shadow slightly, make it just that bit bluer, but bring up the vibrance in the sky. Okay, so that's a graduated filter. Now if we want to do more local adjustments, like add detail to these rocks, and sand, we go add layer. And we can choose the detail option and it's currently got it as structure 40, so maybe we'll bring it up to about 60. We'll choose a, an adjustment brush, uh, make sure the size is sort of like what we want, maybe about 350, that's a good size. So the feather and opacity, we'll make the opacity around 68, feather of, feather of 50 is good. And click on the perfect brush and make sure we have paint in selected as the mode. And then we can just paint in some detail into the foreground, like so. So there you get the idea. You do it with new layers, whatever the uh, effect that you want to apply. Now, if you think that's uh, too much in the water, you can choose paint out and then just remove it from areas that you do not wish it to be in, like so. Okay, so now that we've done that, a couple of other things I would like to do is remove some of these spots. So, what we can do is uh, zoom in, and uh, we can do that via overall settings. Uh, zoom into 100, and uh, use the hand to move around. So we've got like a spot there, another spot there. We won't remove them all because it will take a long time, but we will 
remove a few just to see how it's done. So I've clicked on the perfect eraser and then I just click on the spot, it does its calculations and bang, it's gone. Same with this spot here, gone. So if there's a bit of dirt or mist or something on your lens, there's a good way to get rid of these imperfections. Bit by bit. Pretty cool. So what we'll do is we'll uh, say OK to that. So we'll just come back to overall settings. Uh, we have done that. So uh, what we want to do is we've got it at fit. I don't know if it's too probably a little bit you know you want to get rid of some of those things there and that up there that spot there but uh, for now we'll just leave that as is because uh, we are pretty happy with what we've done I just want to quickly show you some of these effects so if you click on the effects button and filters we have got and presets as we were looking at before so to add a filter uh, so we've got effects here and uh, we want to add a filter so we can go add filter and uh, yeah, you got them on the left as well but uh, what we want to do is come into local adjustments first and add a layer uh, because we want the filter to be adjustable separate from uh, the other adjustments we've made so now if we chose a, uh, a filter so now I uh, I have done that, but I don't know whether I should. So if we want to go with HDR look, we have the ability then to change the, how the opacity of it is. So it, we can go with natural, surreal, glow, subtle, and then we can you know play around with different aspects of it. Now I don't know if I really like that one, so we'll get rid of that. We can add in. Um, some dynamic contrast, which is pretty good. Then we can add another filter, and this will be separate. So if we were to go with uh, noise reduction, add another filter. Let's go with uh, color enhancer and uh, warm warm it up, but bring the opacity down. So you can see there with it up all the way, the sky is really red. Uh, so we'll bump that up, but um, really increase the vibrance on that. So we have the ability to uh, mask it as well if we want, but that's a bit more advanced, so we will have a look at that down the track. But uh, the color enhancer, I think we'll just keep sort of at a lower opacity. So we've got the different uh, filters that we've added. Uh, so that's how you, you play around with filters. So you can switch them on and off as well. So with that one, you know, it's pretty full on. So we'll bring, the, bring that down a fair bit. Noise reduction. It's really smooth things out a bit. So we'll keep that, we'll keep it subtle color enhancer we've played around with so there are your filters so if you go to local adjustments now you can add a, uh, a preset and if we were to go with the uh, golden hour enhancer so with that it really doesn't give you a lot of control it's more if you just want to whack it on and uh, and leave it as is you can then brush uh, different aspects of it so it, you do that there we're brushing away that preset out of the sky put the magic brush on so it gives it a bit more subtlety but it keeps the preset on the rest of the photo. So it's not too bad an option if you 
have a preset that you really like and the way it's uh, going to impact your photo. But me, I'm not really a preset sort of person. Uh, I prefer to do everything as is with all the adjustments that are at your disposal. So if we come back to develop and uh, put in a vignette and uh, we can come down here, choose big softy, then you can change how dark or bright your vignette is. Change the size of it, the roundness of it, how much it's feathered. Normal vignette options. So we've, we've altered the photo. I mean, ultimately it's not uh, stylistically really what I'd be going for. Uh, so that's, um, that's on one's uh, ability to be able to really have a lot of changes to what you can do through presets and, and uh, different adjustments. So if we have a look at the uh, filters that we've put on, we can always switch them on and off as well. So yes, really play around a lot with that. It's, uh, it's pretty cool um, what you can do. You know, you can really get creative and, uh, and create some different looks. You've got opacity controls. Uh, you've got a lot more than what I've gone through to what you can do with your photos. So that's a good starting point as to where on one can really provide some interesting editing options. Uh, to me, this, this is uh, very extreme. Uh, but I guess when you're first learning a, a piece of software, the extremes are, are not such a bad way to begin with. So you can see just how far you can push things. But um, if you're really wanting to, to improve your photography, uh, and your editing, well, we'll start with the extreme work back and uh, and really play around with all these options that you've got. I mean, I'm still learning the software myself. I've only had it for 24 hours, but uh, it's uh, it's definitely got a lot going for it. And there's HDR options too, and there's pano tools as well, which we will go through at some side stage. You can resize uh, the 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 presets. Well, you know. If you're really in a hurry, you can apply presets, you can sync up photos, it's pretty good. So if you're interested in it, uh, that's basic editing. Uh, we'll have a look at a bit more detailed stuff down the track. Thank you for joining me and hope you've enjoyed this. So that was before, that's where I'm at the, at the moment, but we'll see how things change over time.